So the name of the game for physics is you got to check your units, right? Units is everything. Okay. That's what physics is, is applied mathematics. So if you know math, then you can do physics. All you have to know is understand the system you're in, right? So one of the questions uh, my student had was this. And this is, uh, you encounter this in grade 11 physics, you encounter it in grade 12 physics, and you encounter it in first year university physics, okay? Or college physics or whatever. So this is, this is stuff that they cover all three years you get them, okay? If you're lucky, you get them in grade 11. You get them in grade 11. But basically he had this, right? Here's a graph. This is time in seconds usually. And this is velocity in meters per second, okay? And he had a graph like this. And this is time. Uh, I forget what the numbers were, but two, four, six, eight, let's go 10 seconds. And let's make this, I think these were at five, 10, negative five, right? And the question he had was this. Uh, actually, you know what? He sent me the images. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Let me read off the question exactly that way i don't make a little mistake and uh ba -ba. oh yeah here we go oh yeah this is the graph nice actually this went to 12 i guess here let me erase those and then i'll close this guy and then open it up again because my computer works overtime so the fan noise will go up too high right negative 10. so here's the question Figure one shows the velocity graph for a particle having initial position x0, okay, x0, and this is x0, okay, this is the x. Well, that's velocity zero, but it's starting off at position zero at t equals zero seconds, right? And the question was this, at what time or times is the particle found at x equals 35 meters? okay so let me close this guy off that way the computer doesn't go crazy so the question is at what time is x this thing starts off at x is equal to zero at time is equal to zero at what time do we find the position of this particle at 35 meters okay so just imagine there's a position x here and once time, uh, you start the clock, and the velocity of this guy is increasing per second, right? So there's acceleration here, right? If you see this velocity, and this is time in seconds, okay? What you see is an accelerating particle, right? So velocity is increasing over time, so velocity at time zero was zero. At time one was this guy here, whatever that is, let's say 2.5. At time two is two seconds is five meters per second. At three, I'm assuming it'll be at 7.5 meters per second. At four seconds is going at 10 meters per second, okay? And then what it does, it starts slowing down. At five seconds is back to 7.5, and it reaches a velocity of zero, right and then starts traveling in the negative direction so if you're watching this thing this particle or this person right by the way if i miss stuff lance left hook uh thank you for the follows and thank you for the subs if you decide to sub this channel right so there's this guy whoop, 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 whoop. let's assume he's running i don't know how fast you know 10 meters per second is how many kilometers per hour that is right we can convert it maybe we do a conversion to figure out if this is legit to assume so it's a man what are 10 meters per second well i used to run the 100 here well we can we can do this mental math right i used to run the 100 meters in track and field and the best time i had was like 11.8 seconds or something right i think the best time in the world is i don't think they've broken nine seconds yet 
like nine point something seconds I, I don't know if it's reached eight point something seconds yet right it will at some point I think but no one thought they would have broken 11 decades ago and then 10 decades ago and no one thinks that or when I was running anywhere in the last 15 years they will break nine but pretty sure they'll break nine right so if you can run 100 meters zero to 100 meters let's assume in 10 seconds then if someone's traveling at 10, 10 meters per second that's a legitimate speed someone could be running at right okay so we could make it a person okay so this person starts running from x is equal to zero this is their position zero right equals zero starts running and they're running faster and faster right when they get to four seconds it takes them four seconds to reach a velocity of 10 meters per second and then their velocity decreases i should make this a little bit shorter right so they're accelerating from here for four seconds right four seconds and then they start decelerating over the same four second period to zero so it takes them four seconds to reach maximum speed right richard zach thank you for the twitch prime so right and then for another four seconds they decelerate and usually if you're running 100 meters when you cross the finish line you're slowing down but you can't stop right away if you stop right away you're going to break bones right you're going to tear muscles you got to slow down right so you accelerate accelerate to your top speed and you slow down so for another four seconds this person decelerates until they reach a velocity of zero right here's a velocity of zero and then they start going in the other direction for two seconds because the velocity is now negative so if this is our positive direction and in physics what you do whenever you're laying down a problem you give a certain direction uh, you make a certain direction positive and the other direction negative right it's very directional it's vector based right so physics there's a lot of vectors and vectors is basically magnitude and direction okay so this person starts going in a negative velocity direction and we're talking just a two-dimensional system so for another two seconds this person runs back and this is two seconds right two seconds so the question was this okay and this is you know you don't have to draw this but it's a good idea to know what's happening in this system right and that's the that's the key with physics it's math applied mathematics so what you're doing is you're taking your math abilities the powers that you have you're looking at a physical situation in the world this happens to be kinematics right kinematics is bodies in motion i guess things in motion right you could have a whole bunch of other different types of systems you go into that physics deals with electromagnetics magnetic gravity particle physics quantum mechanics anything you want right this is kinematics it's one of the simpler physics um, well these types of problems anyway situations that we have sending rockets to the moon is kinematics it's also got uh, gravity in there and different formulas that you have to end up using right so the way it works is this the question was this at what point or oh, sorry at what times is this person 35 meters away from when they started right the wording of the problem wasn't and that's one of the issues with teaching physics and stuff like this the wordings of problems aren't the best way right if you take the integral of the function of the graph you get the distance moved in one direction right? you will yeah if you take if you take the uh if you take the integral you get the acceleration you take the derivative you get the um distance right the derivative kicks you down one dimension or one unit the integral will kick you up you get the acceleration through the integral i believe right 
So for example, if we have here, let me bring up some kinematics. Bring out my kinematics formulas. Kinematics formulas. And that's what you need for physics, right? You need your formulas. Okay. So take a look at this. Velocity and distance. Here. Um, let's do this here. I'm going to do this with a different color. Uh, since you brought it up, we'll deal with it right now. Okay. We're going to take a lot of tangents. No, integral gives distance. Oh, integral gives distance? Hold on. Let me look at the formula. Integral gives distance. Oh, yeah. I'm going the other way. Psh pooper me right the area under velocity curve yeah the area under velocity that's the way we're gonna uh use it right the area under velocity the function is initially a function of speed so yeah so let me write down the formulas here i always get things backwards so here's velocity the formulas you have velocity final is velocity initial plus at and the distance is equal to i'm just going to write it down v initial t plus one half at squared right so these are two of the equations you have for kinematics and here's the other ones here let me write down the other ones as well let me bring up chat so i'm not missing anything here's the other you basically have four formulas you deal with in kinematics okay here's the other one uh, v squared v final squared is equal to v initial squared plus minus plus 2ad and uh, distance is equal to v t oh no we already got that one why is it giving me two of those ones oh minus uh, yeah we use this one distance is equal to uh, one half one half v final plus v initial plus v initial plus v initial times t okay now back in the day they used to make us memorize these but i don't memorize this or uh, later on you didn't really memorize this okay did I forget a distance did I forget a distance uh, distance right here this one change in distance V I T is the constant term I believe this one so basically if you take the derivative of this guy right the derivative of this guy is it's just a quadratic function right thanks for the correction by the way gang right for sure correct me when i'm wrong please please uh it's how i improve right so if you take the derivative of this if you take a derivative of a any type of quadratic here 5x to the power 3 plus 2x squared all you do you kick the power down to the bottom and subtract the one from it right take it down one notch so this one would be 15x squared plus 4x right so this one the power is one so that kicks down and that becomes here let me write it down and write this guy down here so d is equal to v initial one times v initial is just v initial or the equivalent of it or the equivalent of it right oh you want the c out here that's right i haven't done this forever you want the c out here okay but we're not going to do an integration I'm, I'm not there yet thank you for that oh hold on how come this didn't, didn't get approved allow 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 Doop. sorry about that putin roaster the automat zaps things out right so the one comes out multiplies that and this becomes t to the power of zero plus one half times two comes down a t to the power of one and then that just kicks the uh, derivative of a constant which is what the c is is just zero right so plus zero if you want so this becomes d the derivative of d which is velocity so d oops dd over dt i guess that's the symbolism which is velocity math explicit so i can see why it block blocked it oh that's why it does it so this becomes the derivative of d relative to t is meters per second basically is velocity is equal to v initial and velocity is now v final plus a half kills the two a t right that is this 
right? So if you take the derivative of that, you get that. dd over dt. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I've got to erase this now because we want to find the area, right? If you want the... Uh, if you want to take the integral, you're going to go the other way and stuff, but we're not going to do the integral, really. I I've forgotten how to do integrals. Okay, I would have to look it all up. So let me erase all this. The brown, anyway. Let me kill this guy. Clean up our space a little bit. We might leave the formulas up there. So here's what we got, all right? And one thing you have to appreciate with physics is units is everything. It's the units that matter. EHM. EHM. I don't know what EHM is. So units is everything. Okay. So right now, the units of the y-axis is meters per second. The units of the x-axis is time. Never mind. <laughs> what is this? This is physics, right? He was cleaning his throat. Oh, <laughs> Oh, okay, so yeah, uh, in the distance formula, you would add a constant equivalent to where you start. He's assuming it's zero, where I suppose, yeah, we're starting at zero, right? So x is equal to zero. So the y-axis is meters per second. The x-axis is seconds. Okay. So in general, if you get a question like this, where they say, at what time is this runner 35 meters away from where they started assuming constant acceleration huge constant acceleration is one of the key factors right now if you're looking for time right if you're oh sorry we're 35 meters blah, 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 blah. yeah we do that uh, if you're looking for a distance then you look at your units you go okay how do i use the distant property of our graph to get meters out well if you multiply these two guys the seconds will kill the seconds and you get meters right that's one way you can think about the physics problems that you get whenever you get a physics problem look at what units specifically you're looking for or your marker units and take a look at your setup to try to figure out what you could do with the units to get your appropriate units that they are referring to or wanting, right? So for this problem, what you need to do if you multiply those two guys to get the meters, you read Narnia? I haven't read it yet. I've read parts, but I haven't read it yet. And I haven't watched the movie either. I've read the C.S. Lewis. I've read the other the trilogy that he had, the... The more adult sci-fi trilogy C.S. Lewis had, and that I loved. That was amazing, right? Uh, the hidden, the oh, I forget what they were called. Uh, the, the it was trippy. It, it was very cool. It was very cool. Okay, so take a look at this. So for this problem, the only thing you needed to do is figure out. At what area under the curve is equal to 35 meters well, I'm not gonna lie don't lie the golden compass the golden compass uh, the golden compass is Narnia isn't it the hidden the hidden s secret or something and uh, Palalandrel or something CS Lewis I'm too dumb for this don't get a single thing about all this. Now check this out here. Uh, Daska, check this out. To find out how far this runner has traveled, all you need to do is find the area. Okay. So here, let's find out after four seconds. This is two, three. After four seconds, how far this runner is from where they started. Okay, so if you want to find the area here, check this out. That's an area of a triangle. This is right angles here, right? Area of a triangle 
is equal to one half base times height. This is something you do in grade eight. You do this, right? So this is check like this question is a university first year university physics question. The only mathematics you need, okay, is basically grade eight or grade nine math, as long as you understand what the system is telling you. As long as you understand the units, right? There's a little bit more to it, but the only math that you're really using, you're not even using these guys. Like we're not, we're not even gonna use these guys, right? We're just gonna use area under the graph. I, I teach high school math, yeah, but I'm not a teacher in an institution, I do private. I wouldn't function in an institution well. So let's find the area here. The area there is gonna be four times 10, so one half four times 10. One half of four is two, two times 10 is 20, 20 meters, right? So in the first four seconds, this runner has traveled 20 meters, okay? Let's figure out how far this runner has traveled up to eight seconds, right? So another four seconds, okay this is again four the total distance from there to there and again the height is 10 and that's a triangle again well it's the same thing as this so from there to there decelerating that's another 20 meters so here's 20 and if you count it to here that's 40 meters total that the runners traveled in eight seconds right now they were asking the question was at what time or times is the runner 35 meters away from their original position, right? Well, their original position was here. 35 meters would be like, if that's 40, it would be like here. This is 35 meters. Oops, 35 meters, right? So the runner is 35 meters away from where they started twice, both on the way here they hit it once and when they're running back they hit it twice so there's twice that they're 35 meters away so all we have to do is figure out the area of the graph where the sum of the area is equal to 35. so let's check this out let's do the area for this six after six seconds this part is 20 right Let's figure out what the area is in this part, right? The area in this part is two times five, right? Because from there to there is five. So two times five divided by two, that's an area of a triangle. Area triangle is equal to one half base times height, which is equal to, let me kill these guys. And this looks scary, but all we're doing is just geometry, right? So one half, the base is two times two times five, right? This kills this. So that's another five meters here, right? So 20 plus five is 25. We wanted to figure out 35, but we haven't figured out the area here yet. So what's the area here? The area here is two times five, right? From there to there is five, it's just a box. So two times five is 10, so that's 10. So 20 plus 10 is 30, 35. Oh, six seconds. This runner is at uh, 35 meters away. So it takes them six seconds to go from here. Six seconds, right? The kicker is he goes to the top and comes back. So six seconds is the first time he hits 35 meters away from where he was. And then what we gotta do is figure out when else is he six seconds away? Or sorry, when else is he 35 meters away? So let's figure out the area here. This was five times two, because six to eight is two, divided by two, which is five again. So this part is five, right? So that's 40 meters. And then we gotta, he's got to come back, right? This is negative velocity, which means in the negative direction. 
Is it true that the math can answer almost everything? Almost. Uh, almost. You can quantify almost anything. How much do you love ice cream on a scale of 1 to 10? You just quantify your love of ice cream, right? So let's figure out, this is backwards from where you went. Let's figure out the area here. This is, again, 5. And from 8 to 10 is 2 seconds. Well, that's the same as that, right? So the area here, again, is 1 half times base times height. This kills this, so that's 5, right? But it's negative 5 because it's negative velocity, right? So if you subtract 5 from 40, because that's what the total area was all the way here, right? That's 40 meters that way. 5 meters back, that's 35. So also at 10 seconds, 10 seconds, he's at 35. So it took him four seconds to go there and come back again, right? That was the first problem we did. First year university, uh, a month in, he had this problem, right? You make it look so easy. I wish he was my math teacher. <laughs> yeah. It's it's just I have the background for it, right? And some of these problems aren't easy for me. Like we did one problem where we got it wrong and then we had to figure it out. We knew the answer and we sort of went, okay, what is it about the system that we're not understanding, right? So let me show you. So is that okay? This is, again, we just used our knowledge of physics what the graph means and that's really the knowledge aspect of it there isn't really any mathematics here you know that this is velocity that's time and the area under the graph based on the units meters per second times seconds gives you eliminates the seconds and gives you meters right and then we use just geometry to figure out the area right math is abstract enough to apply to many many situations both real and made up physics moving around in four dimensions, etc. It can't answer philosophical questions like moral problems. It can only quantify, uh, quantify, not qualify. Very well said, uh, Mask of Raven. But it can get you to a level where you can, with the quantifying whatever system you're looking at, you can hopefully make the right decision, right? This is what. Uh, uh, if you watch science fiction, uh, Vulcans, right? What is good? Uh, the, the, what's the Vulcans say? Uh, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few, right? Which I don't agree with. I think that's crazy, right? That's uh, extreme for, for form of majority rules, right? But in certain situations, it applies right and in the Vulcan Star Trek it comes up a lot where they have to you know one person has to sacrifice their lives to save a whole planet or something for sure that applies right you can also conclude that it's eight seconds for the entity because eight seconds for the entity because 35 to 40 minus 5 is four seconds so half of that uh, is two seconds 35 to say, oh yeah that's right that's right the only thing is that I'm from Sweden so the terms and stuff you guys use make me confused yeah and that's the language the natural language right you know how to speak uh, Klingon no I don't <laughs> I know people do <laughs> let me erase this let's do another problem right I guess we're just gonna do physics maybe unless you have math questions if you have math questions lay it on us and we'll try to deal with it right so let's do another one. Here, here's another problem we had. Okay. This was the second problem we dealt with. 